fans and welcome to the Kevin Garnett Number Retirement Ceremony. Tonight, Kevin Garnett becomes the 24th Celtics player to have his number or name retired, cementing a Celtics legacy which featured five All-Star appearances, a Defensive Player of the Year, and a 2008 NBA World Championship banner in his six seasons with the franchise. To kick off this evening's festivities, please join us in welcoming a group of Celtics legend family members who have had their numbers retired in the Garden Raptors. They are introduced in the order of when their number was retired. Representing number 10, Joe Joe White. Please welcome Debbie White. Representing number 2, retired in honor of Red Auerbach. Please welcome Red's daughters, Brandy and Nancy Auerbach.
And now, please welcome tonight's host, NBC Sports Boston play-by-play -play announcer, Mike Gorman. Mike. Welcome everybody here, everybody watching across the country, and everybody watching around the world. To the Kevin Garnett number of retirement ceremony. You know, it was about 14 years ago, and I remember it pretty clearly. You go left out of the hotel, you go down to the bottom of the hill, you jump on the train that's there, you go into the very last stop, and right there, there being a World War II armory that was actually in the home court now for an Italian basketball team. Now, why is that important to know? That's where Kevin Garnett would play his very first game in a Celtic uniform. I remember being really anxious to see KG play. I mean, this is a Celtic team that lost 18 straight games this previous year. I mean, we, we needed help. I didn't even want to broadcast the game. I just wanted to sit around and watch this guy and see if he could possibly be as good as everybody said he was. By halftime, I wanted to find Danny Hank, Danny Hank, so I could give him a hug. This guy was, <laughs> this guy was crazy good. He covered fives, he covered ones. He destroyed anybody who tried to get near his basket. He got all of them. He passed down a half dozen or so assists. He had a couple of blocks, maybe two or three steals. He screamed at an opponent. He coached one of his own teammates. And he stared down an official. And most of all, he played this preseason game in a suburb of Rome. With about 99% of the United States asleep, he played that game like it was his last. And so he would. From that primal scream that preceded every single game to the smile on his face that Dino could bring. So Gino rather than some dancing. Gino! And after destroying everybody in the East and the Lakers in the West, he always And then he rode around the city of Austin on the bow of a duck boat. Well, thousands came out to cheer Kevin Garnett. So for all the radio guys, Kevin, and the audio guys, and the camera guys, and the tape guys, and the guys in the truck, and the staff of the TD Garden, all the people, and the vendors, and the ushers, the security, men and women who work here, the police, the medics, the bull gang, but most of all, for the fans who jumped on, who held on, and loved every minute. But then I say, thanks for the ride, Kevin. Thanks for the ride.
um, his passion, his dedication, you know, all those words, you know, you say so many things that, that describes Kevin. And, um, you know, I, I just want to say, I know I speak for myself, I speak for the fans, I just want to personally thank you. Thank you. Injection and all that we need, and uh, you know what? What better way to revive a franchise than bring the energy that Kevin brought every night? His spirit, his passion, his play. Uh, you know, fans, you guys, you had a chance to see him on the court. You know, and I, and I was lucky enough to meet Kevin as a teenager and kind of know him and see him away from the court. But you know, he, he's probably the nicest person. Uh, he has the best stories. Uh, I'll tell you that. And I remember sitting on the plane, and it was like every year, you know, I'm right here, and he's sitting with the young guys, and he's telling the same story. And I'm hearing the same story every year. And I notice how the story always changes. Y'all like, know what I'm talking about. <laughs> but that was Kevin, man. He always brought the group together. Uh, it was the most selfless of me. He gave his last. And uh, we appreciate it. We appreciate it. I mean, you brought, you brought, you brought a, a sense of culture to this city that was desperately, desperately needed. And you, you brought a Boston pride, Celtic pride. We love you. Thank you. Hey, Jay, congratulations. Thank you for all the good years you gave us. Thank you for being with Boston Celtic. Thank you. Thank you, thank you for deciding to become a Celtic. Congratulations, there's no more deserving player than you. Your tenure as a player has been one of the most inspirational periods of the Celtics history. I never heard anyone say, I bleed green. And KG, you're the first. I'd like to congratulate him on having his jersey retired, but more so for being who he was. The right person at the right time for city to be in. KG, thanks for all the years in Boston. You really brought that energy and that liveliness back to us. KG, the Boston fans loved you. You changed the culture of the team. You made us a champion. KG, congratulations on getting your number retired. It's exactly where it needs to be up in the Raptors. Being on that Celtic team, that OE championship team, that was unbelievable. The leadership, the professionalism, man. And I'm, I'm glad that the jerseys may have retired. My brother, Big KG, Big Tim, Big Boy, I just want to congratulate you on having your jersey retired. You were the fiercest competitor I've ever played with. But other than that, you were the greatest teammate I ever played with. I appreciate you, brother. Love, health, and wealth. Congratulations. Man, I'm so hot. I'm so hot, my man. And it's possible. From the bottom of my heart, I want to ensure that you enjoy this day, enjoy the moment, and we're all rooting for you for life. We have truly been blessed as Celtics fans to have watched you close up. Do what you did for the Celtics and for the rich lore of the Celtics history. I'm, I'm happy for you, and uh, there's no bigger fan. Good for you. KG, thank you for reminding us that anything is possible. Welcome to the Raptors. Now you're here forever. You're always here in our heart, Boston fans. Now you're here up in the banners too. So wherever you go, thank you so much for all the wonderful time uh, and years that you gave us. The mark that you've left on the game. It's only fitting that you're not going to be retired in Boston. Your journey is from a place 
that is, I mean, that's how it's ground in Boston. So, congratulations, you earned it, you deserve it. The Celtics greats, the Lakers greats, they are different than the rest of the league because the tradition of the Lakers and the Celtics is something truly special that we all marvel at, and you deserve to be there. Hey team, Clemmy and I want to add to the many congratulations you're getting for this well-deserved honor. We really appreciate the fact that you helped all of us raise our game. There are a lot of people that talk about being authentic today. You are the authentic leader. You help not only your teammates raise their game, but those of us in the team gallery as well. Congratulations. We love you, man. Best wishes. Big fella. Congratulations. Sad I can't be here, obviously not working, but I wish you the best of luck. I'll let you be back on the west side. Love. Well, KG, congratulations. I think I'm going to retire. It's been a long time ago. I think you and I were in that gym in Chicago before the draft, and uh, come a long way, big fella. And I couldn't be happier or more proud of you for your career and everything you've done. And so, congratulations. Number one, number one, the is fantastic. Congratulations, man. This is about you, my friend. Congratulations. Jim, welcome to the show. I'm glad to see you and now I'm going to visit you Always enjoyed watching you play. And now I'm doing the same thing Ellie and the Raptors. As you once said, anything is possible. Congratulations. I love it that you guys booed Isaiah. That's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> now we'd like to invite Kevin to join Southern Panther partner Rick Brosbeck and his wife, Amina Fazlari, along with co owners Steve and Judy Kaliuga and Bob and Esther Epstein for the presentation of gifts. presented a replica of the retired number banner on which the number five will permanently live in the rafters. An original work of art by esteemed artist Daniel Maltzberg, a colleague that includes a piece of the original Boston Garden Parquet, a custom engraved bottle of Sincoro Extra Anino Tequila, and an NFT gift basket including five original collectibles. Everybody around the world, you carried us forward, and we put that banner in the ceiling. I'm here to say, I think we're all here to say, thank you, thank you, 
Thank you. They put together a video we're going to roll right now. This video shows everybody who you are, what you're about, what it takes to be a great Celtic, what it takes to be a great man, a great champion, and the last number five that will ever play for the Boston Celtics. basketball as long as we're living even when they bury us six feet. This is what it's going to be. With the fifth pick in the 1995 NBA draft, the Minnesota Timberwolves select Kevin Garnett from Farragut Academy in Chicago. In 1995, Kevin Garnett changed the game. He found a new home in the NBA in Minnesota. Through long winters, the kid became the big ticket and eventually the franchise. He was the MVP, the best defender of his generation, but a run to the conference finals was as close as he would get to his dream. In 1995, the Celtics also found a new home. There were also long winters and a run to the conference finals. But something or someone was missing. By 2007, the unselfish superstar and the star-crossed franchise were still a thousand miles apart and light years had felt from a title. basketball, you speak on fans and how they feel about their sports here. I mean, it's a, it's a no brainer. I felt this is probably my best opportunity to win the ring. Here we are, playing number five. I've never been around a player like that, ever. I've never seen a guy that committed to winning. And the reason his voice is strong is because he backs it up with his actions. Anything less than championships is a failure. That's what it is. It's only one winner. Kevin Garnett and the Celtics, people said, just needed something more to reach the top of the mountain. Turns out what they needed was each other. He made his teammates better. He made the fans crazier. He made the garden louder. And he made the Celtics, the Celtics again.
Celtic's royalty. Seeing myself in mortar in, in, in the cell. <laughs> so, say what say about manifesting this. Yeah. Hey, I'm going to dive into your intensity. Like, how, where did that start from? You know, my coach is here from Farragut, Coach Wolf. Shout the Wolf, you know what I'm saying? I know you're in somewhere. I like to think that he gave me the tools and, and, and kind of the, the know how to get out of my own way and to, to actually not be afraid to have a style. And, the style was all energetic, you know, I'm a passionate person, um, and he, he gave me kind of the, the know-how to just go out and actually be who you are, man. Let that passion out, let people see who you really are on the board, and I've just been able to be like that since I, since, since I left more fashion. You talked about how sometimes it was hard for you to control the intensity. You had to find out like how to make it so you could take that energy and put it on the court. Who helped you with that? I wouldn't say uh, it, was, uh, it was more of a how to control the energy because you know no one tells you how to actually use your superpower, right? You know, <laughs> you know my mom's a real energetic person. She's a very hard working lady, and I watched her work hard. And you know it's all it's like in my DNA. So at times I would have problems when I would lose and turning it off and being able to control it, being honest. But, you know, yoga, manifestations, being zen, chronic, I figured it out. Your, your focus is unmatched by anyone. And I, I think we can all say this, any of your teammates, we've all had teammates, your focus was next level. Like, how do you get to that point, that clock hits 60, starts ticking down, you become a different guy. 
Yeah, uh, if I'm being honest, man, I'm a, um, I'm a professional. I'm a professionalist, you know? And uh, I can't even front, man. At night, it would, it would drive me crazy. I know we up there having fun, but it's been some nights where I haven't had much sleep, man. And I watched 30 tapes on the guy, and I'm watching, and I can't turn off. You know, it sounds like a good thing now, but at times it really haunted me. But, you know, I got it under control, and it worked for me. When you're in Minnesota, you're struggling, and you, you guys talk about, or you want to maybe call Paul Pierce, or you want to figure out how to team up here. Like, how was, the, how was those conversations? What was that summer like before you were finally, because I know you're a really loyal guy to an organization, to a city. How hard was that to do that? Uh, being loyal was something that's part of my DNA, man. I'm, you know, P and I are real friends in real life, so whenever I would run into him in like the All Star Games, we'd always have a chat. He would always bring it up. We'd always flirt with it. You know, I think the one time I came in here uh, and played, had a decent night in here. He shot something to win, and we kind of had a laugh about it. And then when it started to become real life, we actually got serious. And uh, the infamous Danny Ainge came and saw me in the position. Shout out to Danny Ainge again. Yeah. You also said that when you got here, you were better able to handle those conversations with management, ownership, you know, uh, coaches, players. Like you, you felt like you were a different leader when you walked onto this floor. Yeah, Minnesota, I'd like to shout out Minnesota, man, because they actually pretty big people. The with this baby to come to Boston to go home, you know? When I got here, you know, I wanted to, I wanted to have a certain understanding with the ownership group. Doc and I was always on the, on, on the same page, and uh, when it came to communicating with the players, that was an easy thing, but um, the, those, those years in Minnesota actually grew me for the, for the time that I, that I got to uh, Boston. Now you get here in 07, 08, right from the jump, pickup games. Right. It's intense. Right. You know, you had, for first we're gonna shout out the bench. Right. You know, Leon, Big Baby, right. Eddie Howe, they, they coming at you in the pickup games. You know, you know, you know. I was listening to the the, 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 the videos and everything in here, and um, I kept hearing that it was said that I came here and made players better. And in all actuality, those players made me better. And I like to think that they made each other better. He's still on the scene again. Now I want to say something, man. I want, it's good to see Ray Allen here, man. Real shit. And, uh, it's good to see him here, man. You met us, Mark. take my craft really serious, I work really hard. You know, a lot of players say they're in the gym, but I'm really in the gym. And you know, you know, I'm really working on mine. And I like to think that they, the Big Perk, Leon, everybody on our squad make me better, man. I thank y'all for that, real talk. Shout out, real shit. You know, Ray works, Paul works, you know, 40 minutes, next day, 9 a.m., one-on-one -on -one game. You always keep your eye on those two and the work that they were putting in, try to one-up each other? Not one-up each other, but you gotta know, we're recognized real and still sharp and still. You feel me? Yeah. So, you know, when I'm coming in, I watch them work, they watch me work. You know what I'm saying? And we all pushing each other. And when some Ray do, uh, in his drills that made him a better shooter, I would take a little bit of that. Uh, P has some stuff that, you know, on the one-on-one -on -one game, I actually took a little bit of his patience and his, and his IQ. So, yeah, I was, I was taking everything. Eddie House one of the best shooters I've ever seen in my life. Big Pope was one of the best defenders. Big Baby for his shooting to be short and know how to use his size and space. I was, I was taking stuff from everybody. Get into the playoffs, the run, Atlanta, Cleveland, you know, Detroit. You know, like, uh, what was that run like for you being here? Like, that run was crazy, if I'm being honest, man. Um, 
I have been in the playoffs before. Obviously, this is our first run. But if I'm being honest, man, we have so much confidence in ourselves and our team that I really think that, man, the only thing that we could stop us was injuries. Real talk, man. If we don't get injured, man, we get about a couple more leagues out here, so. That's just one of the most. But that run, man, that run was one of the more magical runs I've ever had in the playoffs. So I thought it was one of the more memorable things. Um, I got my kids here today, Capri and Coach here with me. Capri was born in the year one. Thank you for being my kids today. Thank you, Capri. Thank you for inviting me. I love y'all. All right. Shout out to the Pilato family. Yeah, I didn't get to see y'all over here. Jim Pilato, the Pilato family. I know y'all make it. Yeah, but that was a magical run, man. And I'll never forget that. So, so Kevin is always linked to legendary stories, right? So we can we get this, let's get this arm wrestling story cleared up. <laughs> Hurt this time me, it was two guys, I thought it was just Baby. Baby was crushing everybody, why did you challenge him? If I'm being honest, man, I didn't really want to do any of it. I would just sit back like the whole team, just watching everybody. Like, <laughs> Like, look at these dumb dogs, man. Yeah, they're all wrestling. You know, we got a game tomorrow. What y'all doing? Y'all all wrestling? And, you know, Classic P, man. Classic P got up, baby slammed, you know. First, Baby and Leon. Now, y'all don't know this, but Baby and Leon, like the little brothers, is always smashing, fighting, spiting, and grabbing. So, we always breaking them two up. So, you know, they are wrestling. Meanwhile, Doc, let us do all this, by the way, y'all. You know what I'm saying? You know, babies, babies, you know, slam Leon, boom. Yeah, you how's everybody jump up to you? Yeah, baby, yeah, yeah. So big fella come out of his shirt. Slobbing, ah! <laughs> then Pete kind of sit back and watch him, and then Pete go, shit, you want to do that to Tim? I'm like, man, chill out, man. I ain't really with that. Then baby go, yeah, what, what's up, what's up? <laughs> we got a bang, big fella. If you want it, come get it. <laughs> I love you, Lord. You know I love you. You know I love you. I love you, Lord, but if you only get one silver back on here, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> Let me tell you the seventh. So Paul Pierce, he put all the money on Kevin. Nobody else bet Kevin. Nobody on the plane bet KG except for Paul Pierce. Right, he's talking about pressure. <laughs> right. Shout to Pete for that, y'all. He had it back no matter what. No yeah. matter what. Right. By the way, we had a trade at the time, Ella Sir. Shout to Ella Sir. Ella Sir was sweating so much. <laughs> Ella Sir was sweating so much. And you know, I'm cheap, right? You know that. Right. Yeah. I know you just sit back watching. Shout out to the Nah, I put 500 on baby, but the best 500 I ever spent. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't know how you did it, man. I don't know how you did it. Nah, man. You know, I'm stronger than what I look like, Scott. I don't get it. <laughs> it's that will, man. It's that will. All right. Like, okay, a couple songs, right? First of all, in the air tonight, that thing starts to rock it right before the drums, right? Absolutely. What's that mean to you? You know, I actually attach my heartbeat to that song. When I hear that song, I go into another zone. It's hard for me to be at a game with my kids watching the game and then they play that because I always go there. But, um, that song used to speak to me, used to speak to my core. And my favorite part of when, when I played here was when we'd be in the back and they would play that song before we came out. We went out the same tunnel. I was already locked in before I hit the flow, man. I was already on the floor. I was already on the floor. And you love music, right? Say what? You love music. I love music. Love it. Music and vibration is everything. Yeah. yeah. So. Like this is real talk. How can you listen to the same song in the locker room, in the weight room, on the practice floor, on the plane, on the bus for two weeks straight, the same song? How is that possible? So I'm not a foodie, and you know, I'm not a guy that's a big fan of food, but once I find something I like, I stay with it. No matter what. No matter what. Especially if it's working. So if that song was working for the two weeks, you best believe we're gonna run that back for another two weeks. I'm gonna best really explain it. <laughs> Doc, if it ain't broke, don't fix it, you feel me? He loved it. We all didn't like it, but we, we, a lot of us love KG for a lot of reasons. 
His choice of the same song for two straight weeks and we're around each other for eight hours a day was not one of your greatest qualities. It's all good. It wasn't for y'all. It wasn't for y'all. It was for myself. Yes. Yeah. And not, no one would touch the radio. No one would touch nothing. They complained, but they wouldn't do anything about it. Shout out to Rondo, because Rondo loved the radio. Rondo. Right. You next, man. He would say something. Nah, I definitely don't say something. He wasn't scared. No way. Like, give, me, give me your... Uh, your version of your relationship with Gino on those blowouts. <laughs> Shout out to Gino. So, so for me, when Gino came out, I already knew he was up like 30 or 40. <laughs> so when Gino came on, it was like I was, I was able to turn off the focus. I was able to enjoy like the game or the rest of the game. I was able to enjoy the guys that got to play for the rest of the game. And that's what Gino was for me. Gino was time for me to sit back and enjoy the game. So whenever he came on, Day one, we all playing team on the chart, that made it. We won. We won by a big catch, you know what I mean? All right, so I was around KG for three years, and not one time, you can't find a teammate ever say anything where KG would ever put a teammate down. There was one time, one time, playing San Antonio Spurs, and Matt Barter is in here dominating, right? And we go in the locker room, and we're talking, man, you gotta like Popovich. You gotta like, but man, you know what? R.C. Buford puts a good team, Paul Pierce stands up, and he says, who got Bonner? And you know you had Bonner. Who got Bonner? You look at Paul and say, I got Bonner. But he wouldn't be wide open if I didn't have to help your ass on Ginobili. <laughs> One time. Hey, Chris Gordon, I'm, I'm glad you said that. I'm glad you said that. I'm glad you said it. But yeah, I got my ass kicked off with Matt Bond here because of Paul Pierce. <laughs> Thanks, Pete. Now, but that was part of you guys' relationship. Like, he, could, he was the one guy with Rocco, too. And those guys would talk to you like that, and you would go to another level. Bonner didn't see the hoop in the second half. And you saved me because, you know, I was thinking, Danny Ainge signed the wrong ginger, man. Like, you probably should have signed him instead of me. Stop it. Stop it right now. You the white mama. Alright? That brother's not the white mama. You know what I'm saying? Alright, KG. You got the floor, man. Anything you want to say to these people? No, I just want to say thank you again, Wayne. Thank you for the show. I want to thank Danny Ames for the vision. I want to thank Doc Rivers for coaching us hard. And I want to thank all the guys, man, for showing up. Thank y'all for coming here today, man. It meant a lot, man. To all the Celtics that's playing here, man. Thank y'all for standing. I appreciate it with JT. All y'all, man. I root for y'all, man. Good luck in the playoffs. Keep keeping some lives. Keep playing the game.
for number five, Kevin. Thank you, guys.